All right, all right. We shall be analyzing the newest review from DSP. His honest. Of course, as soon as someone says, oh no, I'm an honest politician. That just means they're a lying sack of shit. When you get to say, oh no, 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 oh, this isn't a lie. This is honest. This is totally true, I swear. The more you harp on being true, the more you harp on not lying. Guess what? The more likely they are to be lying. And so, let's watch. Wow. Let's see. All what right, does he so, do? ladies and gents, it's now time for the review. I know you guys are pumped for this. You really? guys have been loving my live reviews recently. I'm did sure one. you're super excited for this, right? <laughs> He did one right. and it caught on All a right. bit. Let me get set up here. In fact, I wonder if the camera's ready. I don't know if it is. Also, this oh is God. not okay. from him. It's almost ready. This is from course, someone else you know what? I'm gonna who uploaded it before he did. Let's, let's get the camera ready here quick. Since he uploaded I'm going to watch it on his, and I'll have the link to his link to, the link to his link, the link to his video in the description below. So check him out, like, comment. The more interaction you have with the video, the better it does on the algorithm. And we want this guy's video to blow up and just get a billion views so DSPs doesn't. This is all just messing with him. It easily amuses me. <clears throat> Let's get the camera to the right resolution, at least. At the Maybe least. he knows how to do that. There we go, and I can zoom it out. There we are. But as you can see, my hair's completely screwed up from the headphones, so... All right, I'm gonna go brush my hair really? quickly, and then we're gonna actually, uh, we're actually gonna do the uh, the live review. Okay. Really. Oh, by the way, Mackenzie just cheered. He said, "End of the credit says extinction will return." <laughs> yes. You kind of cut this out. Extinction will return. Of course it will. <clears throat> okay. Dude, seriously. Um, Stop touching Let me your brush hair. my hair, and then we'll do this. All right. I'll be right back. Like this is live. Like his fans are paying money and all this to watch him live. Throwing a bunch of money at him. And this is what he does. It's like, alright, I'm gonna go brush my hair. Like, first of all, you have very little hair left. Second of all, what the f Who does this in the middle of a live stream? Like, alright, uh, I gotta cancel real quick. I'll be right, or cut the stream or something. Do the review separate. You don't have to change anything. Be like, alright guys, well that's the end of this live stream. I'm gonna go brush my hair, do whatever, and then I'll come back, record the live review, and then upload it to YouTube. Like, that's all you gotta do. You don't have to... God damn, this is a lot of dead air. Does he come back anytime soon? I can't tell. Let's see. God damn! It's been like a minute now. Oh, I see a shadow. He might be coming back. Crap. Yep, there he is. And your hair still looks all like right, shit. you guys ready for this? <laughs> I know you guys are. Holy crap. Take a sip. That's one of his tells that he's right, lying. Guys, live review coming right now. It's like a mind FYI, reset for him. Obviously, I can't do shout outs during a live review, but if you guys do cheer, sub, and tip during the review, I will give you a shout out after the review is over, okay? Uh, if you remember. Shout out to Legend Fated right now. I can't do shout outs. Where I go play Maybe Super Mario Land out. for the Game Boy. Super Mario Land for the Game Boy. Very nice. Okay. <clears throat> We ready? Also, let's see how many times he goes through this video. Mind you, when he sat down with Cat, he didn't do it once. So clearly, it's not something he has to do. It's a verbal tick of his. Just like the, oh, I'm about to lie. Take a sip. If you watch it, whenever he takes a sip, you know he's about to lie. Of course, he lies a lot, but that's a very telling clue that when he takes a sip, he's lying. And then again, he was able to do the entire Cat video without a single... <laughs> And yet, already he's done it multiple times in this video. All right, here we go, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Dark Side Phil here, and welcome to another live review. I'm actually doing this review immediately after completing another game that I just finished on stream. This time around, the name Finally. of the game is Extinction from Iron Galaxy, and you may say he that name kind of sounds familiar. Yeah, they're, they're the same studio who was involved with games like Killer Instinct and the like in the last uh, several years. So, Extinction, full disclosure, 
I received a review copy of the game. Just want to let you guys know that up front. I didn't actually buy the game, but this game is priced. Mind you, the guy throws a fit. OMG, they got a review copy. They got the game early. That's bogus. Ah, I want to be a gamer just like you. Hey, everybody. I got a free game. You. At $60. Full retail price. What is Extinction? Well, Extinction is a game that combines many different kinds of genres and ideas from other video games and pop culture. It's an Attack on Titan clone. The world design and graphical style of World of Warcraft, okay, with the plotline of Attack on Titan, giant orcs, much like the Titans in that, that franchise, are attacking humanity and destroying their towns and citizens and basically trying to end humanity, okay? You are... A sentinel, a person who is tasked with trying to take down these orc armies the and stop Lord. them from destroying humanity in this game. Uh, much like Attack on Titan, there was the, the renegade squad who was trying to fight the giant titans, right? Um, combine that with the gameplay of a game, say, like Shadow of the Colossus and or Monster Hunter. You're trying to find a way to scale ginormous enemies and find their weak points, hack at these weak points to kill them, take them down, Okay. Um, sounds interesting. On the base level, wow, that sounds like it could probably be pretty interesting, right? I mean, three different elements, you know, graphics of one universe and plotline of another with, with gameplay of another. It just kind of, maybe it'll... Graphics don't really matter. If you grew up playing on an Atari, what matters is gameplay and fun. Pac-Man was a ton of fun. The, the Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers 3, that kind of like, those were great, entertaining games. You could play those for hours over and over again. The graphics were garbage, especially compared to today. So don't rely on graphics for a review. One of my favorite examples was uh, the Young Justice video game. It was a PS3 game. Like, late in the life of the PS3, yet it had pretty basic PS2 graphics. But you know what? It was still a fun game, because you had to run around as superheroes and beat up bad guys. But, uh, what was that thing? It was Total Biscuit. Wah, the graphics! Wah. So I find it. They came on the PS2. Would you be saying the same thing? Well, well, no, because it's actually pretty damn good graphics for a PS2. It's like, but is the is the game fun? Well, uh, the graphics. Forget the graphics. Was the game fun? Well, you get to run around in superheroes, beat up bad guys. So it's a fun game. Get over graphics. Will come together to be a coherent whole. <clears throat> um, Extinction is not necessarily a horrendously bad or non-functional game. Okay. Um, however, Extinction, yeah, sadly, falls far short of what anyone in 2018 should be expecting to get for a full $60 retail price tag, okay? What is Extinction? What kind of gameplay is there? Well, there is a campaign comprised of seven chapters. Each chapter is roughly comprised of anywhere from five to seven separate levels. So it's around between 30 to 45 or so individual levels. What will you be doing in said levels? Right. Well... There's a few things you'll be doing. Number one, rescuing civilians. Throughout these open world maps in Extinction, there are civilians who need to be rescued from... I mean, so far the review isn't that bad. And they're all just standing near these kind of crystal pylons going like this, completely just defenseless. It's your job to try to evacuate them by fighting enemies around them and stopping them from being attacked and then holding down a button to have them summoned away. Okay? That's one kind of gameplay in the game. Then, there's the standard mini-enemies called jackals. There's different kinds of jackals that you'll fight during the course of the game, including a little one that just looks like a standard green orc. You hit him a couple times, he dies. There is a more powerful version that throws projectiles, a little bit more health. Hit him a few times, he'll die. Then there's a super-powered one that's big and red. These are really powerful, and they'll hit you with super armor. You try to hit them, they're going to punch right through your attacks. So you got to be a little bit more... You know, wary of how to Strategic. fight them, dodge around a little bit, you know, kind of stick and move, stick and move. And then there's the vultures, which are flying enemies, enemies that have wings. They're pretty weak. You only hit them a few times, they'll die, but they can be annoying because they attack from the air. Four types of standard enemies. That's it. There's nothing else in the game, standard enemies besides pretty these basic. guys. Now, how do you kill them? Well, there's two kinds of attacks in the game. There's either combos, which you mash a, an attack button to do different combos. You can either just mash it repeatedly to get like a four or five hit combo. If you hold down the button, you'll do a launcher, which can then lead to an aerial juggle. Or if you stagger your button inputs, you'll do different attacks. So, for example, he'll do a slash and then a big wide slash that maybe hit like a several enemies that are around you. And if you delay the button inputs, you'll find you'll get better combos. However, 
Tentacle. In the course of playing Extinction, you're going to find that button is literally worthless. That mash the button combo button is worthless. Because the best attack in the game is the charge attack, which you do by holding down left trigger, targeting an enemy, and then releasing. The charge attack is incredibly powerful. It will kill the regular uh, Jackal with one hit. Well, now, said the regular weak. Jackal, in comparison, needs eight hits of the mashing button in order to kill it. So it's like mash, 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 mash. Oh, it's finally dead. Or charge, release, dead. So obviously you're always going to use the charge attack no matter what. Um, the mid-level enemy takes three hits, the bigger level enemy takes four hits, and those flying enemies only take one hit. So literally, there's a button in the game that's completely worthless. The one thing you hmm. use it against, the little enemies, the jackals, you never use it. Just use the charge attack, you'll kill them more quickly. It's a completely ineffective strategy. So it almost seems like they had an idea for what they wanted to do with the melee combat, and then they just abandoned it completely and made this charge attack the best move in the game. Mm, okay? Sounds so, like they need to so that's have a cool That's the second it. thing that you're going to be doing. Fighting these little jackals. The third thing you're going to be doing in the game is fighting giant orcs called Yay. Raveny, okay? This is the primary focus of the game, and if you saw a trailer for Extinction, it's probably what you figured the entire game was. Ginormous monsters that are trying to destroy the human uh, town. What, do you think the entire game is going to be boss will. fights? The whole idea is to try to hack off their armor and limbs to stun them so they can't move, then get up on their their shoulders and chop their necks so their heads are, are come off, they're beheaded, and then you kill them, okay? Now, there's variations of these Raveny in the game. Some of them will have no armor at all, in which case you could just use that charge attack to target their various limbs, chop them off, they'll get stunned, you know, chop off two legs, he falls on his ass, can't move, maybe try to swat you, chop off his arms, now he's got nothing, he's got four nubs, hmm. climb up his neck, and chop him at the head. Now, you can't behead a Raveny until your rage meter is completely filled. How do you fill the rage meter? Rescuing civilians killing jackals gee what a coincidence the other two things in this game are what charge the rage meter or well, destroying that's pieces basic of armor, game. which is what i'm going to talk about next armor there's different kinds of armor in the game wooden armor which just requires one charge slash and the armor will be destroyed then you can get at the limb and hack it off metal armor which has different ways to deactivate it sometimes there's locks that you have to specifically target with your charge attack nifty and release talk off the locks now the armor will come off then you can attack the limb there's specialized armor. For example, there's golden armor that requires multiple locks, okay? There's skulls, so flaming basic. skulls. You can't damage flaming skulls. What you need to do is get the enemy to attack with that limb. So, for example, if you're near an enemy who has flaming skull armor on its legs, get it to try to stomp you. It accidentally puts out its own fire. Then you can destroy the skull, which destroys the armor. Then you so can jump off that limb and ground that opponent and get at that game limb. Gameplay trope, um, I mean... There's also variations. Like, for example, there's wooden armor with spikes on it. It's the same as regular wooden armor, only it requires additional hits and more precise aiming you can't just climb wooden armor you'll get spiked or whatever um and that's really about it there's the only other kind of armor that i can really that's is, about it that's um there's one kind of armor that you that can sounds strip, like pretty you know? cool so what you need to do instead of like chopping off their legs and climbing up their backs sometimes these giant ravity will have like little pouches on their belts so you have a grappling hook that you can throw up quickly and zip line up to their back that's the one variation with the with the leg armor and then at the end of the game there's spike armor spike armor is completely impervious you can't damage it at all what you need to do is try to convince the enemy to attack itself so climb up on its shoulders near its spike pads and spike helmet and it'll try to swat at you and hit itself after it does that two or three times now the armor is weakened and now you can destroy it yourself with your charge attack and then you can get at it so oh, that sounds like basic boss killing jackal battle strategy citizens and destroying pieces of armor on these giant ravity orcs charges up your rage meter once your rage meter's charged now you climb up you make sure there's no helmet on the head of the guy if there is you destroy it you aim for the neck zoop you kill the ravenny game over all right so literally so like was he expecting just things you do in extinction save citizens fight gee it's like oh the only three things you do in final fantasy side quests fight smaller guys fight big guys gee the only three things you do in in uh, demon souls is Fight small guys, collect souls, and beat up big guys. It's like, yeah, that's general gameplay tropes. That's what you do. You do the missions, like, save civilians. Yeah, fight the smaller guys. And then you fight the bosses. In this case, the giant orc things in this game. Is he really complaining about basic video game tropes? Like, that's what you do in video games like this. I mean, technically... <clears throat> Let's see, where's the game that is that's not true? Alright, Madden. Although I guess you can... No, you do the missions of, oh, 
complete this many yards in passing, get this many yards on the ground, get this many sacks with this player. And then, oh, you're battling through the small guys, you know, you're beating up the Browns, whatever. And then you get to the playoffs where you got to fight the mini bosses, and you get to the Super Bowl where you got to fight the big boss. Like, it's generally all the same thing. Like, how can you. It's your basic video game trope, dude. <laughs> Broken game mechanics, something I could do, dude. The jackals, which are the standard small enemies, or kill the giant raveny, which are the big enemies. The one exception to the rule is that there's another mission type during the campaign called tower defense, where you need to s protect these certain towers that are located. So there's more than just city. that. Okay. So there's four things. You have a time limit that you have to defend them. Five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes. I think by the end of the game, it's upwards of nine minutes. Okay. You may think, oh, that's easy, just kill everything, right? Well, no, because the enemies will infinitely respawn. Now, the good news is only the giant Raveny can damage the towers. The bad news is the game literally cheats. So you'll go to fight right. one Raveny, you'll be fighting it. Oh, spawn another Raveny on the other side of the map that's right near the towers, and it starts attacking them and knocking them down immediately. And you realize, how is that fair? So the only way for you to really be successful in these stages is to bait the Raveny to try to get close to each other and then just repeatedly chop their feet. Never actually kill the Raveny, because if you do, they respawn. So what you need hmm. to do is just chop off one foot, chop off the other foot. So he's stunned for a while, okay? Run over to the other guy. Chop off one foot, chop off the other foot, run back to the first guy. One thing I forgot to mention, if you don't quickly kill the Raveny, they will regenerate their limbs. So, for example, in this case with the tower defense, if you're not fast enough, the, the, that Raveny will regenerate his feet, get up, and I'll start moving towards the towers again. So, it's, literally, to beat the tower defense stages, you're just chopping You're feet bitching feet about... Running back and forth of, between two giant... Like, that's what you do in video games. ...for upwards of ten minutes. To make matters even worse, like, that's not boring, right? You, obviously, it sounds pretty boring. Every time you, you do that maybe. charge attack with the trigger, all right, that also freezes time. So even though a certain stage might say, survive for 8 minutes, it might take you 12 to 15 minutes because if you keep using the charge attack, you freeze time every time you use it. So it becomes incredibly tedious and annoying. Um, so, after you complete a stage, all right, you earn experience points. And these experience points are used to buy various upgrades for your characters. In addition, every stage will have additional requirements to earn you bonus experience points so, so every video game stage is just rescue overall 20 civilians that's all you have to do but there may be a bonus objective kill 15 jackals behead two raveny so instead of just doing the base objective to get through the stage you want to actually try to do those extra objectives to earn as many so again points it's as you can basic video game trope to level up your character after you're the bitching about tropes, basic right? video game tropes variations on upgrades for example you can have more health okay you can have um better jumping abilities you can have the ability to recover in midair. You can have the ability to widen your radar, and boy, do I recommend that one because the the radar in this game is very small. So if you're trying to save civilians, a lot of times you can't even see them. You don't know where they are because the mini map is so small, and there's no full map of any stage in the game. So without increased radar, you never know where you even go yeah, on the map. Good. It becomes incredibly frustrating. There's the ability to rescue civilians faster. This is very important to beat the game because it takes a long time to rescue civilians by default. But if you keep putting money into that upgrade, by the end, you'll be rescuing civilians super quick. In fact, by the end of the game, I had a group of civilians around those crystal pylons I mentioned who were getting attacked. I didn't even bother fighting the little enemies anymore. I would just rescue them because hmm. they would be rescued before the enemies ever killed any of them. So there you go. Um, and there's also various things like, for example, always have... 20% of your rage meter filled by default no matter what. Wow, that's huge, because that means you're already a fifth of the way to being able to behead, behead one of the Raveny at any time. Okay? Now, this guy's just bitching about the basic game. video game tropes. The little guys, the jackals, will barely ever hurt you. It's really rare if you're going to get killed by one of these guys. You're going to be using the charge attack to attack them. You've got a dodge button to dodge out of the way. They're pretty much pushovers. But the Raveny... They will almost always insta-kill you no matter what. Because they have big sweeping attacks with their arms that are fast and almost impossible to get out of the way of. Some Raveny have weapons, like giant clubs, that just double their range. When they stomp, it's an area of effect attack that damages you and stuns you. So the Raveny honestly are pretty annoying when it comes to fighting them, because sometimes you'll be, I took off one foot, took off the other foot, trying to scale. Oh, he swatted his back. I was on the other side of his shoulder, but somehow area of effect damage killed me. Now, the good news is, there's literally zero penalties to dying in Extinction. 
That's right. There's no extra lives. You don't have to start the level over. There's zero penalty. All that happens is you respawn somewhere else on the map and have to run back to whatever you were doing when you die and then just continue on with the game. That's um, usually what you would love in right? a game. But I think the reason they did that is they realized if there was a penalty, the game would be too hard. Um, since there's no penalty, a lot of the times you could just rush back to the objective and try to do whatever you want. Because this is a guy who like, bitches about, oh, I died. The, my last waypoint was three minutes ago. Uh, the only time I ever felt found dying annoying is during the tower defense missions, okay? When I'm trying to prevent the Ravity from destroying the towers, I need to keep them away, and if I die and I respawn somewhere else, now I gotta run across the entirety of the map to try to get back to that Ravity, and it takes so long, sometimes another tower has fallen, or two towers have fallen, and I fail the mission. And in fact... Wait, here's the lie. Out of all the, the missions in the entire campaign of the game, which roughly... The campaign of the game will, will last you six to seven hours tops. If you fail a lot, if you do good, you'll probably only be like five hours. The only stages I found difficult were the tower defense stages. Those were the ones where I sometimes I couldn't get the Ravini close enough where I could run back and forth and keep chopping off their limbs. Or I would kill one and then another one would respawn right next to the tower and then boom, 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 take out all the towers. Uh, outside of those, the civilian missions, saving civilians, are dirt easy. And no lie, I usually beat those stages in about two to three minutes. That's ridiculous. A whole stage of the game being in two to three minutes because all you need to do is run and save them. And like I said, once you get those rescue speed upgrades... He also skipped all the cutscenes. Like, if you actually sit there and watch the storyline, get the cutscenes, like, it might be longer. But, yeah, when you just rush through like he does because he wants to get it done and out as fast as possible. For your character, you could beat it so quickly it's, it's just laughable. Okay? The stages to kill Ravity, like kill four Ravity, kill six Ravity, those are kind of fun. Because some of the Ravity will have variety in the armor and stuff that they're wearing. Okay, this one's easy. I can just chop his leg, just climb him, get him to swap the skull on his own head, chop the skull, behead him, he's done. Or you maybe have more complex ones. Man, this guy's got spike armor, so I gotta try to lure him to hit himself and stuff like that. So it becomes more interesting when you have to actually execute the Ravity. But the tower defense stages are unfucking bearable. There's at least five to six of them in the game, and they really hold up the game. They take upwards of 10 to 15 minutes per mission. If you fail, you gotta start completely from the beginning. They take too long. This game is too short. This part of the game takes too long. This game is too short. Which one is it? Which brings me to a point I should definitely bring up. Ladies and gentlemen, at least on the PlayStation 4, Extinction is a very unstable game. Four times during the course of me playing this game, so six hours of gameplay, four times, that's almost once every hour and a half, the game crashed. The problem is there's no checkpoints in Extinction. So if you start a, 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 a chapter or you start a level, it's a tower defense level. Wow. All right, I'm down to the last minute after eight minutes of grinding. And as I told you, it's actually more than that because every time you use the charge attack, it, st it stalls time. You've been playing for 15 minutes. I'm about to win. I'm about to win. Game crashes. Start over from the beginning. Kill six Ravity. I killed five. I'm on the shoulders of the sixth one. Here we go. The killing blow. Game crashes. Start over from the hmm. beginning. And that happened. That's something that can be fixed with patches. And Skyrim, when it came out, was a complete mess until they patched it. A lot of games are messes nowadays because they have a deadline. We had to meet this deadline. Well, this doesn't work. That doesn't work. And yeah, we'll just patch it later, which sucks, but that's what they do nowadays. You gotta expect that. Uh, I'm just telling myself, don't buy the game day one. Don't buy the game day one, because there's gonna be patches that come out to make it better. Yeah, but I wanna play it now. It's my money, and I want it now. Do they sell those commercials? Probably. Anyways, back to the terrible train wreck that is DSP. Four times during the course of me playing the campaign of the game. Okay? Story and cutscenes. Well, folks, I hate to say it, the story is incredibly bare bones. There is one, and it is fully voice acted, but most of the story is fleshed out during just still frame images of the characters with text reading underneath it as the dialogue is read out loud. There's no actual animated cutscenes to 95% of the story of the game. There are six different animated cutscenes. I take that back. I said there's actually seven because there's an intro and a finale. So there's probably seven or eight animated cutscenes that are very, very bare bones like animation. I think it looks like Legend of Korra, only like ultimate budget Legend of Korra. Like I had one tenth of the budget of Legend of Korra and I made a couple animated cutscenes. That's what they look like. Um, Except he's never watched Legend of Korra, as far as anyone knows. 
so like six to seven animated cutscenes that last one to two minutes each plus a bunch of voice acting narration the story is very bare bones it's not very robust it's not very riveting it's pretty much just in there for a reason to be in there okay so the story pretty much terrible non-existent almost and really it's not riveting at all to keep you playing the game so then maybe the gameplay will keep you playing the game right well as i just mentioned to you guys there's four kinds of missions kill raveny tower defense rescue citizens and um kill jackals that's it that's all of the gameplay of extinction once you've played the game for roughly about an hour to an hour and a half you've seen everything except some of the variations of the higher level armor that'll be on gravity near the end of the game but outside of that you've seen everything the game will have in addition and i have not seen this in a games campaign in a long time ladies and gentlemen extinction has randomly generated stages in the campaign what do I mean by that? I mean the objectives, the side objectives, the stage are randomly generated. It'll actually run an RNG, pro, uh, you know, thing. Oh, this is going to be a kill six Raveny stage. Your bonus objective is rescue civilians. The stage is the town. It that sounds pretty good. That way you can replay it again and I have the exact same missions. This guy's bitching about stuff that actually sounds good. And like the red, and you also complain like if you die, you come back and the enemies will be different. It's like, well, that sounds pretty good. Like everything he bitches about sounds good. It does it randomly. It's so stupid. So every time you play a stage in Extinction, you could get a completely different experience. One person could play a stage and get all Raveny, who have by the way, the Raveny are randomly generated, and so is their armor. So. Oh, okay, it's a tower defense stage, but all the Raveny have no armor on them, so I can easily just chop off their limbs. I beat the stage easily. Someone else goes to play it, and the guy has middle armor you can't break, and the hardest level armor. What the hell? How is that fair? Right? It's not. Some people might have the easiest side objectives. Other people have the hardest side objectives. Sometimes you'll get a map that's easier. Sometimes you'll get a map that's harder. Randomly awesome. campaigns. I mean, they couldn't even take the time to say, oh, I'm going to design each stage intricately for the campaign, which is the meat of the game. No. Literally, it's a RNG game. So that being said, um, it's pretty pathetic. I mean, just being real with you guys. It's yeah, well, too. It's a game it that, generated. if this game were being sold for maybe for parts of it. 20 bucks, okay, $20, the third of a price of a regular standard retail game, um, okay, the story's terrible, and there's very little animation in the cutscenes. There's no multiplayer. Say, yeah, for like Diablo 2, especially campaign, after and when you're trying to go after Mephesto. But the game so I'm like, oh, I can just remember this path. Go here, 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 right. and I find Mephesto. Right, I'm like, no. It's randomly generated every we're single time. This for $60, ladies and gentlemen. Now, to be fair, there's slightly more content than what I've described here with the campaign. There's also time trials. So each level of the campaign, you could time yourself to beat it within a certain amount of time, and you get additional experience points to level up your character more if you complete those trials. Then there's a couple other modes. of daily challenge mode where each day there's a new challenge for you to complete, and you can rank yourself against your friends who own the game if you happen to have the bad luck of anyone else actually bought this game. There's Except you have no friends. You have no friends to compete against. You won't even, like, oh, I'm going to do multiplayer. No, no one's allowed to play with me. Not even my fans. No. But he won't even do multiplayer games with his fans. Let alone friends, because he has none. There's also deal extinction mode, which is basically a survival mode. You fight endlessly against endless waves of respawning enemies and see how long you can survive. And I believe there's one other challenge style mode. So there's a lot of content in this. So there are other modes, but they're all single player, and it's all the same exact gameplay that you experienced in the campaign with no variation whatsoever, no new enemies, nothing. It's the same crap regurgitated over and over and over, and basically it's completely worthless. Once you've beaten the campaign of Extinction, you'll have no desire to ever go back. You'll have no reason to go you back. Might not. You'll never want to play those additional modes, and since there's no multiplayer, it's just uh, it's kind of like a quick fart that rockets out of your ass and you forget about it, right? You left it behind you. Um, really? Sadly, that's really the best description He's not for Extinction. It's a quick fart. And then you're done with it, and you can walk away from that stink that was left behind and pretend like it never happened. Um, it's sad, because honestly, I think that if there was more variation in enemies, more kinds of missions, and... That's like what everyone was talking about. I was like, that's the only thing you think of is a fart. Like, I'm not a chosen entertainer. <laughs> Fart's a funny word. <laughs> Stupid. Co-op. Boy, does this game scream a co-op game. 
if two or three people were co-oping against these giant rabbits, you take out the foot, I'll climb up on his head and take out his helmet, boom. Or you're on a tower defense stage, well, now it doesn't matter if a Raveny spawned on the other side of the map already attacking the towers. Your teammate can go handle that, and you handle the Raveny that's right in front of you. And you take it on in a team base setting. That would have been outstanding. Be in fact, I almost have to think that's kind of maybe what they wanted to do. But for whatever reason, they couldn't do it budget-wise or skill-wise of the developers or, or whatever. Time -wise. It just seems to me like that is exactly what how this game could have shined. But they just didn't bother with it. It wouldn't matter because he has no friends. Crappy, randomly generated campaign with only four kinds of missions. Uh, only three kinds of different objectives. It's just really bad. Oh, here comes a lie. And even worse is the fact that the game crashes on PS4. So not only is the game short, no multiplayer, no replayability, you're going to have to replay stages from the start if your PS4 crashes while you're playing it. Oh my god. But it's by not the PS4, far, it's the game. By far. The worst offense that Extinction can offer is that it's a full $60 price tag. That in 2018, any game developer would think that a game that you could beat within five to six hours, no replayability, no multiplayer, no co-op, is worth $60, I mean... You mean like Call of Duty? Their missions don't even last... I thought it was like Black Ops, the one I played was like three, maybe four hours, like, oh, you beat the game. Now go online and have 12-year-olds call you all the racist, bigoted slurs in the book. Like, yeah, I'm good on that. Or, uh, uh, what was it? Until Dawn. You can beat that in about six and a half hours. But it's shit time of replayability because you can replay and do different choices and all that. Let's see, what else do I got up here that was short? Batman Arkham Asylum was... No, it wasn't no 20 hours. Let's see. Hidden Agenda? God, that's not even two hours. But I ain't, I ain't greatly... I thought it wasn't $60. But I greatly enjoyed Hidden Agenda. Because you can replay through it again. And I watched them all play. And they made choices I never made. So I got to see new cutscenes. Even though I played Hidden Agenda a few times. And Justice 2. That took me like, what, five and a half hours to beat? And mind you, I suck at fighting games. So if you were actually good at fighting games, you'd probably beat it even faster. Well, you go online and play against people. He doesn't because he always gets his ass handed to him. And he complains about lag. Let's see. Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge wasn't very long, but that was a... Ton of fun, in my opinion. Life? <laughs> it's not the size, it's what you do with it. <clears throat> Anyways. Alright, back to the review. They knew they were releasing a fart. They knew it. They knew they were releasing back to the fart. A, a stinker. They knew this game was not worth 60 bucks, and they tried to hide that fact behind nice trailers and things like that, and pretend like the game was good. This by far, ladies and gentlemen, is the biggest ripoff of 2018 there's no way you can justify the amount of content that's in extinction as being worth 60 bucks in fact i will go as far to say this there was another game this year that i reviewed just like this that i said was a huge ripoff and definitely you shouldn't check it out the name of the game was sea of thieves all right sea of thieves is a game that there's only three kinds of missions it's a very shallow world there's not a lot of people inside of the world to interact with and you know but but a big butt in Sea of mm -hmm. Thieves. There's multiplayer, there's co op. Okay? So, being able to play against people or cooperating with people, at least in the. This is the game where, oh no, there's water coming on the boat. Take, you would go to the bottom of the boat, get scoop a bucket of water, go up to the next floor of the boat, and toss it. It's like, that's. What? Can you. Like, how is anyone. He says, I'm a valedictorian. Then he's asked, let's see, how many letters are there in the alphabet? He tries to bail water out of a boat by going to the bottom level of the boat, scooping up water, going up to the next level of the boat, and tossing it to the next level of the boat. Like, you gotta toss it over the side, you moron. Or, uh, he has the map. We need to find, uh, chickens. Oh, this island's called the Isle of Chickens. That can't be where we gotta go. Mind you, he didn't have a headset, so he couldn't actually communicate with anyone. So they kept crashing the rocks because he'd get them to the crow's nest. It's not like he can go, oh, rocks to the left, turn to the right. Like, no, because he had no headset. So, what the f you don't have no headset for your like, Xbox, so what do you care about co-op and all that? You can't talk to anyone, because he can't handle anything online. Case of Sea of Thieves offers up a social aspect that would make you want to at least play through the game for a while. None of that exists in Extinction. 
Extinction is literally single player only. Play this very shallow amount of content, but pay us full retail price for it. That is the worst kind of game because it basically says that these game developers are ripping you off knowingly knowing there are tons of games out there you'll get more out of, but they're still trying to charge you full price and fool you into thinking it's just as good as all those other $60 games. Bullshit. I, in my review score right now, which I'm about to tell you, I'm going to grade this game directly off of the value you get. So, ladies and gentlemen, for $60, this game's a complete fucking ripoff, all right? In reality, for $20, if I had paid 20 bucks to play Extinction... You paid nothing. Okay, you five got or six free. hours of content with some challenges, no multiplayer, but it's only 20 bucks. Okay, that makes sense. So, I have to take a full review score of 10, which I would have given to a perfect game, Okay, and I have to say they're charging $60. This game is only worth $20. $20 is one third of 60. Therefore, to even start rating this game, I have to rate it equivalent to that. So 100 points for $60. What's 20? 3.33. So my review score for Extinction starts as a 3.33 out of 10. Now I've got to rate it as the fact that the game crashed repeatedly on my PS4. So let's subtract a half a point, right? <laughs> okay, the game is too shallow. The game's way too repetitive. There's RNG. Let's deduct some points. RNG okay? is a good thing. It makes it better so you can not do the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over every time you play. You get something different. No. It's too repetitive. It's too shallow. It's not good. It's way overpriced. It's a slap in the face of modern consumers. I rate Extinction 2 out of 10. 2 out of 10. It's a stupid part. But yeah, the, the guy's complaining about... Oh, it's RNG. Well, RNG is good. Look at Diablo 2, where... Sometimes it got annoying, because... Or uh, also Act 3, when you're going down in the sewers to find... One of the pieces of the flail. That could get annoying, because they're randomly generous. It's like, fuck, where the hell is it? But, it makes it different. It makes it unique, so that every time you play... Although, if you're doing single play, you can just get map hacks... So you just activate the map pack and go, boop, boop. oh, there's a staircase to get to Mephesto. There's the staircase to get to the other level. There's where the entrance to the next level is. Like, okay. That, but how is he complaining? Like, oh, you don't do the exact same thing over and over and over again. But then he complains. You do the exact same thing over and over and over again. Like, well, which is it? Are you complaining that you have to do the same thing over and over again? Or are you complaining, well, the RNG, you don't do the same thing over and over again? Like, which is it? You can't have both. Gah. And, alright. And now, I've actually watched other people playing. It's like, yeah, this doesn't look... It's an Attack on Titan clone. It doesn't look like a... Like, yeah, I can understand. 60 bucks is a ripoff. 20 bucks, I might get it and check it out. But 60? No. But then again, he paid nothing. God, like, the guy's complaining about stuff that actually seemed good. And then he also complains stuff that is probably bad, like... The tower defense thing comes like, oh yeah, you kill this guy. Oh crap! One of the orcs just popped up right next to the towers. That sucks. And he has a good point of, yeah, make it co-op. That'd be cool. Or multiplayer, whatever. Just have people jump to your game, whatever. That'd be cool. But again, they probably had a deadline that they had to meet. That's what happened to uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. If like they started off with a first-person shooter engine, so then they had to figure out how to take that engine and make it like to open-world game. Which took a lot of fucking time. Like, if they had more time, if they had started off with an engine that wasn't built for first-person shooters and built for the kind of game they were making, Andromeda would have been a lot better. But, because of whatever company thing was going on, they had to use the first-person shooter engine to make an open-world game like they had. And so that took up a lot of time. If they had more time, they could have made it better. And guess what? They've patched it in the future and all that, so it's actually more playable now. I, I just started and then I got distracted by shiny objects. Happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Of course, you can always patch a game in the future. And this is a review copy, so the game's technically I don't think out yet. And... So this... Like, some like some of his complaints are real, but then... A lot of stuff he's complaining... Like, I don't like this. But I also don't like the opposite of it. Well then... What do you want? You don't like that it's randomly generated, but you also don't like that you do the same thing. But if it's randomly generated, you're not doing the same thing. Like, which one do you want? God damn. You know what I noticed? No. <laughs> so how did he go? 
Let's see. His last note probably was around four minutes. So he went almost 25 minutes without a single. And yet, when he's doing a live stream, that's all he fucking does. He does it constantly. So this is a bit much like the cat video of where he's actually able to go the entire time without doing that noise. So what was it about this, or when he did the cat video, like that it made him do his verbal tick off? Like seriously, that's so fucking annoying. And I had to clear my throat a couple of times, so you know what I did? That's right, I hit the mute button, so I could clear my throat without you having to hear it. Could I say, I'm played like that. When I'm playing a game on PC, whatever, like Warframe or Fortnite, like, oh man, I'm gonna clear my throat. Remember to hit the button. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but still. Now this guy just, he bitched about everything. And it's like, you can't bitch about everything. Okay, I've, I've played some pretty bad games, but... And I was like, all right, well, this was bad, that was bad, that was bad, this was bad, but this was cool, that was cool. Like, how... I've watched other people play, and like, yeah, this seemed kind of repetitive, and then there's not a lot of variation, except to the bosses. Like, he complained, oh, they show those would be just giant guys, so you want just giant guys? No, 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 you got to fight small guys. Okay, so you like fighting small guys? No, I don't like fighting the smaller guys. Well, you just said that you didn't want to just fight just the big guys. So, which is it? Do you want just boss battles? Do you want... Like, what the fuck do you want? And the boss battles actually... Or, I guess, maybe not bosses, but the giant work thing sign kind of cool. It's like, this one had wooden armor. This one had metal. This one had spice. That you actually make them hurt themselves so you can get through the armor. This one had ones that have locks. So you got to take out the locks first. Like, that's a lot of variety. That's a lot of variation. Where, yeah, it's the exact same orc. But this orc is different because it has this. This orc is the same thing, but it has, but it's different because it has that. Again, is it a Gary game? No, from what I've watched, it's maybe it's just your basic game. Five out of ten. It's not. It's not two out of ten. It's a five out of. It's a basic. You follow the same game tropes as a lot of games. You get some storyline, but he kept. He skipped everything. So how are you gonna know what the story is? If the story is good or bad, if you skip everything. It's, your, it's just your basic game. It's something that you can... Although, for $60, I'd wait for it to be on sale, but... It seems like a game like, Alright, I'm going to sit down and play it. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I like it, but it's not going to keep me around. Not like Diablo 2 or Diablo 3 or other games like that were... God, freaking StarCraft's been around for years. It's, it's not going to be, you no know, 10 years from now, they're going to be playing it competitively or whatever, trying to make... Oh, I... My best time just beat your best time. Yay! No, it's not going to be like that. But, pay for it to be on sale. Pick it up. If you enjoy it, great. If you don't, Steam, if you're supposed to get it on PC, Steam has their two-hour, two-week thing where if you play fewer than two hours within two weeks of buying it, you can just return it, no questions asked. Which I never actually had to use until I got VR, because some of the VR games are great. They're amazing. And others are like, yeah, this needs a lot of work. But then again, a lot of these VR games are made by like three guys in a basement. Doing it on their off time. Like, alright, just got home from work. Let's see if I can't bust out some stuff right now. Ah, <sighs> terrible. Anyways, thank you for watching. As always, like, subscribe, comment down below, and have a wonderful day.